What, what would you say are some of the characteristics that a just a, a successful founder has? You know, uh, you, you. I like this poster over here. Uh, I got it at TechCrunch party. Uh, it says, uh, "I'm not delusional. I'm an entrepreneur," <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it takes. I, I mean, uh, um, if you talk to anybody who's doing a company that's interesting. You know, uh, uh, an Uber, a Facebook, an Oracle, a uh, Nvidia, uh, a Twitter, uh, you know, any of those kind of companies are uh, unicorns. I guess they they have founders who saw something that's possible a long time before anybody else did. And um, you know, uh, Travis and Garrett driving around, going, "Man, this taxi system sucks." And yeah. why we have a mobile phone? Why can't I click an icon and have a car show up? Yeah. You know? Um, uh, most people were not thinking like that, mm. e even though they had a mobile phone in their hand. Yeah. Right? They don't look at the world that way. Um, what's a good example of this? Well, you were talking about Mark and when you first met Mark Zuckerberg and how he understood social yeah. networking. Well, and he understood one. systems. I mean, I, I remember I walked around with him at Davos uh, like nine years ago before I was like, a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was still important, but he, uh, I think it, Facebook back then had a hundred million users, and now mm. it has one point seven billion people on it. Um, he he talked with Philip Rosedale, and now started a new VR company called High Fidelity, mm. and they were talking about sharding their databases. Mm. And he, he knew the technology at a deep enough level to have a really deep conversation that I didn't understand mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know in other words how are they how are they because he ran Second Life mm -hmm. Philip ran Second Life back then and he ran for Facebook and they were both scaling pretty quickly and having a deal with keeping databases mm -hmm. running uh, at scale right and yeah so he understood that they were able to in, like really innovate systems internally right didn't they invent a lot of like NoSQL and document oriented type stuff yeah. I asked Waz the same question. Uh, I said, um, "How do I? How do you build an apple? How, do, yeah. how does a unicorn happen?" Yeah. It, it, you know, we didn't call them unicorns back then. I just said, "How do you build an apple? How, yeah. how, how do you start a billion-dollar company?" Yeah. Like that? And he says, uh, "He said it'll happen every decade, and it'll happen when the existing business ecosystem ignores it for a while." Right, personal computers back in the seventies were toys. They weren't seen as serious computers. So all the CIOs or whatever you call the technical nerd who ran a company who wouldn't buy one. Right? He's yeah. like, uh, we already have a mini. Why do we need a little toy computer when we have a real computer? Yeah. And so they missed it. And it, it, it was his own bosses. Uh, he tried to get HP to build up the personal computer. Because he was like, I don't want to leave HP. I, it, it, he, was, he didn't want to start a company. Mm -hmm. I guess that's one way. It's like, they're delusional, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. like, why wouldn't you start a company to do this? Yeah. But no, he didn't want to start yeah. a company. Especially if you can build the technology. Yeah, he just wanted to yeah. build, he wanted his own, he walked me around the computer uh, history museum and said, I just wanted my own computer. I yeah. didn't give a shit about making all the money and yeah. building a company. Yeah. I just wanted a personal computer. If HP was going to build it for me, I would be like, Happy, yeah. Uh, you know, just five years before, he told his dad. His dad was like, "Oh, that computer costs more than a house in Cupertino," and he goes, "I want that computer." And he, and, <clears throat> and he told his dad, "I don't think I'll own a house. <laughs> I'd rather own a computer." Totally. You know, and this was back in '77. But this is the yeah. delusion that yeah. he's so he's ahead of everything. Yeah. And you go and talk to normal people in America back in 1976, '77. They would have no clue what's coming, right? Yeah. And uh, we're in that new age right now, right? Yeah. Uh, we all know mixed reality glasses are coming, at least those who have seen like a hollow lens or gotten been one of the lucky few to get a look at Magic Leap. Um, you, you know it's coming. And it's just when. And, yeah. and who's going to be the winner? I don't know. Yeah. You know, even though Magically got one point three billion dollars and seems like it's the leader, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean they win. Yeah, and 
And that capital is all at risk. Yeah. Because Apple could come out with something tomorrow, yeah. beat them to market, and have a better product or a better technology, and yeah. you didn't even know it existed. Because yeah. Apple's keeping its mouth shut about what it's yeah. doing. Yeah.